Imagine you're hiking somewhere remote in the Grand Canyon. The air is dry, the sun is blazing, and suddenly you realize you're out of water. The only source you can see is the Colorado River flowing far below. Your instinct tells you to get down there as fast as possible. In other words, you need to optimize your path to the river to minimize the time it takes to reach it. This is just the same concept that underlies both physics and machine learning. In fundamental physics, the governing equations of motion come from minimizing what physicists call the action. On the other hand, every machine learning model learns by minimizing something we call the loss function. We can say that the action in physics is dual to the loss function in machine learning. Both describe a system's behavior by defining a kind of cost, and in both cases, the actual behavior of the system is the one that minimizes that cost. However, at least at this time, there is a crucial difference between how nature optimizes its system in physics and how we human optimize our machine learning models. But what exactly is this difference? Can we make a breakthrough in machine learning by mimicking how nature optimizes its systems? If interested to explore these subjects, stay tuned. You can access all transcripts, notes, and projects in the description below. Let's first understand what the action means in physics. In physics, the action is a quantity that summarizes the entire motion of a system. It's defined as the integral of the Lagrangian over time. The Lagrangian itself is the difference between the kinetic energy and potential energy of the system. Take the example of a simple pendulum, a ball of mass m hanging from a string of length l. As it swings, the ball's kinetic energy comes from its motion. Since the velocity v is related to the angular velocity theta dot, this becomes the potential energy comes from gravity. It's zero at the lowest point and increases as the pendulum rises. So, the Lagrangian of the pendulum is According to the principle of least action, the actual motion of the system, the path the pendulum follows, is the one that minimizes the total action. Now let's switch to machine learning. In machine learning, we also have a quantity that guides behavior of models, the loss function. It measures how far the model's predictions are from the true values. The larger the loss, the worse the model. The goal of training machine learning is to minimize this loss, just as nature minimizes the action. To make this concrete, let's focus on classification as one of the most common problems in machine learning. It is teaching a model to distinguish between two categories, say, cat versus dog, or diseased versus healthy. Two common algorithms for this are logistic regression and support vector machine, SVM. From a probabilistic viewpoint, both of these models are deeply connected to a physical system known as a spin half particle in a magnetic field, a system that has only two possible energy states of up or down. In both physics and machine learning, we assign probabilities to these states using the same mathematical form. Here, beta plays the role of inverse temperature in physics, and in machine learning, it corresponds to the weighted sum of data points where x represents a data point and w represents the model's parameters. The normalization constant z, called the partition function, ensures that all probabilities add up to 1. Even though logistic regression and SVM share this probabilistic foundation, they differ in how they measure and minimize the cost of being wrong, that is, in their loss functions. Let's first see how SVM works. Suppose we have a data set with two features x sub 1 and x sub 2, and a label y that can be either negative 1 or positive 1. We plot the points, using red for negative 1 and blue for positive 1. The goal of SVM is to find a decision boundary, a line, or a hyperplane in higher dimensions that separates the two classes as clearly as possible. Mathematically, the boundary can be written as where w determines the orientation and b the position of the line. The SVM algorithm tries to maximize the margin, the distance between the boundary and the nearest data points from each class. Those nearest points are called support vectors, and the margin is given by the following equation. To make the margin large, we want to make the norm of W small. However, 
if we only minimize the norm of W, we might misclassify some data points. So we balance these two goals using the hinge loss function. Here, C controls how much we care about misclassifications, the second term, versus margin width, the first term. The first term ensures the margin stays wide, while the second penalizes errors or points too close to the boundary. Now let's review logistic regression. In logistic regression, we again model the probability of a data point belonging to a class using the same equation. But instead of focusing on maximizing the margin, logistic regression tries to adjust its parameters, W, so that the predicted probabilities are as close as possible to the true labels. It does this by minimizing the log loss. This loss is smooth and differentiable, which makes it very suitable for gradient-based optimization methods like gradient descent. So far, we've seen that both in physics and machine learning, the system seeks to minimize something, the action in physics, the loss function in machine learning. But now comes the key question. What's the difference between how nature optimizes its system in physics and how we human try to optimize our machine learning models? Let's go back to our pendulum. Its action is. This single mathematical form, the integral of the Lagrangian over time, appears everywhere in physics. The motion of light, the curvature of space-time, the expansion of the universe, the behavior of electric and magnetic fields, the weak and strong forces that we often observe in nuclear reactions, all follow from minimizing this same mathematical quantity. In short, the action in physics is universal. Now contrast that with machine learning. We've already seen that the loss function for logistic regression is different from that of the SVM, and these are just two examples among dozens. Mean squared error, cross entropy, kullback leibler divergence, Huber loss, the list goes on. You might think some of these are equivalent under certain transformations. And indeed, sometimes they are. For instance, the logistic loss can be derived as the negative log likelihood or equivalently as the kullback liebler divergence between empirical and model probabilities. But in many cases, there's no universal principle tying all loss functions together. To emphasize these inequivalences, let's for example explore the smoothness of the loss functions in the two machine learning models. The logistic loss in logistic regression is smooth and differentiable, which means we can apply gradient descent easily. The hinge loss in SVM, on the other hand, is not smooth everywhere. There is a point at which the function changes slope abruptly. In other words, it has a kink. This means the gradient is undefined at that point, and we need specialized optimization methods like subgradient descent or quadratic programming to handle it. So the crucial difference is that in defining the cost of behavior, nature's approach is elegant, universal, and smooth while our human-designed loss functions are ad hoc and fragmented. At this point, a natural question arises. If logistic regression and SVM share the same probabilistic foundation but have different loss functions, whose loss function is better? The truth is that no one knows. This is an open question in machine learning research. But it leads to a fascinating line of thought. Why does nature, in all its complexity, use just one universal optimization principle, while we humans invent new loss functions for every problem? What is it about the mathematical form of the action in physics that makes it so special, so fundamental, so general, that it can describe everything from expanding galaxies to short-range forces in nuclear reactions? If we could understand that, and if we could mimic it, perhaps we could design a new kind of machine learning framework. One not limited by arbitrary loss functions, but governed by a universal principle of least action. A framework where models don't just fit data, but behave like nature evolving, adapting, and optimizing effortlessly according to the same rules that govern the universe itself. Maybe that's the next big step in artificial intelligence, learning not just from data, but from nature's way of learning. So, stay tuned as we will explore such lines of thought in the future videos of this series.